Hi lovelies! We are celebrating the arrival of soup season with some of my all-time favorite soup recipes. And when it comes to comfort food, today's recipe is the very best. It's my absolutely amazing creamy chicken and vegetable soup, and it's full of good for you ingredients that your entire family will love. Now, I don't know about you guys, but in my house, cold season has arrived with a vengeance. My kids have been sick basically constantly since September, so this soup has been on heavy rotation because it's really, really comforting if you're not feeling well. The best part is it's actually really, really easy to make, and you can do all of your prep during your Sunday meal prep. So come Monday or Tuesday night, you can just throw it all in a pot, and it's ready in less than 30 minutes. What is not to love? Now, of course, this soup, like most of my soups, all starts with a nice big soup pot heating up on the stove. If you don't have a nice big soup pot like this, I highly recommend asking Santa for one. It's one of those kitchen tools I simply could not be without. You should also keep in mind that while you can get these very expensive versions, there's also much more affordable ones. For example, this one I think was less than $50. I'll link a couple options in the description box below if you're interested in picking one up. Yourself. So to my pot, I'm gonna start by adding some butter. So I've got this heating up over medium high heat and I'm just gonna let that butter melt down. If you don't wanna use butter in this recipe, it's totally fine. A little olive oil or some vegetable or canola oil will totally work here, but you guys know how I feel about butter, right? Butter makes everything better. Come on, especially when you're not feeling well, you gotta have the butter. Just as soon as that butter is melted, I'm gonna get in here with some onion, some celery, and some carrots, all classic soup ingredients. And I just wanna let those cook away for maybe three or four minutes, just until they start to soften up, and you'll notice that celery turns nice and bright green. In addition to all the sickness we've been battling in my house, my sweet baby Cole just turned eight months old, and he's cutting all four of his top front teeth right now. So there's been a lot going on. We're a little sleep deprived. And I like to think that this soup is extra comforting for him too. Oh yes, he loves this soup as well. All right, just as soon as your veggies are nice and soft like mine are here, we're gonna go ahead and add some garlic to this. And with my garlic, guys, I am not holding back. I've got two big cloves headed in here. When you're talking about cold fighting soups, you definitely wanna add as much garlic as you can tolerate. Also, it smells amazing in the pot. We're just gonna let that garlic get nice and hot and bothered for another 30 seconds or so before we go ahead and add some flour to this. I'm using flour in this recipe to give me a nice rich and creamy texture, but what I wanna do first is sort of cook off that floury flavor. So I'm just gonna let my flour cook up, stirring it constantly for another minute or so. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add some potatoes to my pot. Adding potatoes to this soup makes it a lot more filling and hearty. You know, sometimes you have a bowl of soup and then you're hungry just an hour or two later. The potatoes really help to sort of fill you up. Same thing with the chicken and the extra veggies that go in here. So I've got two large potatoes cut into a nice small dice and I'm also going to be adding my broth at this point. So I like using low sodium chicken broth in this recipe, but it's really up to you, whatever kind of broth you like. You could also do this with vegetable broth if you wanted to, totally up to you, depending on what you have on hand. I'm also gonna go ahead and add my chicken to the pot. So I'm using some boneless, skinless chicken thighs here, and I'm actually going to be adding them whole, and then what I'll do is let them cook completely, take them out and chop them, if you wanted to do this with chicken breasts, you totally could, or if you had leftover cooked chicken, you absolutely had the option to add that in here as well. When it comes to seasoning this soup, you really have the option to use any sort of dried herbs you want here, but I like keeping things simple and classic with just a nice sprig of fresh thyme. I find you get really, really gorgeous flavor that way. And at this point, I'm just gonna pop a lid on my pot and bring this mixture to a boil. Just as soon as it's reached a boil, you can reduce your heat to medium and let this cook away for maybe 10 or 15 minutes. That's really all it takes for those potatoes to get nice and tender and that chicken to be fully cooked through. All right, friends, it's been about 15 minutes and you can see lots of yummy things are happening here. Our chicken is fully cooked and so are those potatoes. So now it's time to get our chicken out of the pot and we're gonna give it a rough chop before we get it back into the pot. This is a really, really quick technique that I use with pretty much all my chicken soup recipes now. At the same time, I'll remove my thyme sprig as well. 
We're gonna pop the lid on this and let it keep cooking while we set to work on just chopping up this chicken quickly. Honestly, it's so easy to do at this point because the chicken is nicely cooked. All right, now we're gonna bring it all together. So I've got my chicken all chopped up and it's gonna go straight back into my pot. Watch for any splashback. Oh, I really like to add lots of chicken to make this extra filling. I'm also ready to add even more great veggies to this soup because I want it to be as nutritious as possible. So I've opted for some broccoli florets that I've just cut into nice small pieces, as well as some peas. I'm using fresh, but you could definitely use frozen in this recipe. Now, the cool part about this is you can actually add any kind of greens you want here. You could add some kale, some spinach, a little bit of asparagus, or some green beans, or even some snap peas or snow peas if you have those on hand. I like adding them towards the end of cooking so they keep their nice bright green color and they don't get too mushy. Basically, I'm just gonna let these cook for another two to three minutes just until my broccoli is tender. And at this point, I'm ready to finish this soup off. I like to do it with a good splash of cream for added richness and a nice helping of salt and pepper to taste. And honestly, guys, that's it. How easy was that? This soup is rich, creamy, satisfying, and super nutritious, which is why I absolutely adore it. I hope your family loves it as much as mine does and that you'll give it a try for yourselves. If you do, be sure to tweet me, Instagram me, or Facebook me a photo because you know how much I love seeing your kitchen creations. Remember, this recipe, like all of my recipes, is featured on HealthyMealPlans.com, our amazing meal planning site that allows you to browse more than a thousand recipes, drag and drop them into your weekly meal plan, and then automatically generates your grocery list for the week. I hope you'll check it out. Thank you as always so much for watching. And finally, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe because there is lots more deliciousness where this came from.